I understand. You found paradise in Briarcliff. You had a good trade. You made a good living at the Liquid Lounge. You joined the police and there were courts of law. You didn't need a friend like me. But then now you come to me and say, Mr. President, give me justice. But you don't ask with respect. You don't offer friendship. You don't even think to call me Mr. Bill Clinton. Instead, you come to my house on the day my daughter is to be molested. And you ask me if you could do murder for money. But I will smuggle you a cell phone through the anus of a fellow inmate. I will allow you to call beautiful women on it. But in return, I must ask you to do murder for me in prison. To murder Jeffrey Epstein, who molested many young women that I also molested many times. Mr. Tatoglioni, do you understand? <laughs> Welcome back to True and On, the only episode of the podcast that is the second episode of this podcast. <laughs> it's been a long day, ladies and gentlemen. When we have some Epstein news for you, Liz, what has been going on? Oh my God, so much. Um, so Jeffrey Epstein was attacked. Or I, was he? I want every single person listening to this podcast right now to stop what they're doing, to stop their car in the middle of the freeway, to stop doing push-ups at the gym, to stop <laughs> posting on bodybuilder forums. And I want you to bring your hands together in prayer. Yes. Because like we were saying, like last week, it was the cry was, the slogan we raised was kill Jeffrey Epstein. But now... Yes. No, last week, we definitely... Um, Jeffrey Epstein, devil. We're going to catch him. We're going to get him. Scum. Scum of the earth. Just piece of shit. Now I need every piece of psychic armor that you can, you can, you can build in the blacksmithy of your mind. And I want you to outfit Mr. Epstein in that. Not because we like him. Because Jeffrey Epstein is allegedly a child molester. Yes. But because we need to know the truth. No, Jeffrey Epstein is innocent of, of trying suicide. to kill himself. Yes. Yeah. No, he's. <laughs> so we need to um, basically protect Jeffrey Epstein in order to catch Jeffrey Epstein. Absolutely. So this yeah. has levels. Yeah. This is like how, you know, you, you don't let your children get kidnapped so you can later yell at your children when they do shit you don't like. This is the same exact sort of thing. So, like, again, like I said, welcome back. This is the second episode of True and On Podcast, uh, which is the only Jeffrey Epstein-oriented podcast run by two amateur gumshoes who are going to solve the crime in its entirety. And just to reiterate, neither of us are pedophiles. Yeah, I... There's been a lot of miscommunication. <laughs> Apparently, the audio must have cut out for some people, but at the beginning of the last episode, Liz and I said very clearly, we are not pedophiles. We got a lot of weird emails. Yeah, that's a hard not. Yeah, from people if some with the email address at stardewvalleydeveloper.com. <laughs> not sure what that means, uh, but we are not involved in any of that. Yes, uh, not pedophiles, not CIA. Yeah, yeah. well... Um, well, we're not sure yet. Anyways, Jeffrey Epstein, if you do not know, I'm just kidding. If you're listening to this podcast, you know. But Jeffrey Epstein is in jail for sex trafficking. Yes. He was attacked. Yes. Last night. Yes, last night. Or two nights ago. Uh, at this point, who knows when people are listening to it. Let's just say three months ago. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, he was found unresponsive in his cell with marks around his neck. There Blue was in the face. Six sources went on the record with yes. NBC News about this. Several of them say that, oh, he might have tried to kill himself. People say, oh, maybe he tried to fake kill himself so he'd go to somewhere nicer, maybe get some Oxycontin, which I admit, if I was in jail, Oxycontin would be very nice. But then the fourth source mm. said something I found very interesting. Yeah, do you want me to read it? A yes. fourth source said an assault had not been ruled out and that another inmate was questioned. What was that inmate's name, Liz? The inmate who investigators have talked to in Lower Manhattan facility has been identified as Nicholas Tartaglioni. An Italian, huh? According to two sources. Listen, if I know one thing about blatant ethnic stereotypes, <laughs> it's that Italians uh -oh. in jail have done one thing. 
make pizza. Exactly. Poorly. <laughs> uh, no. So Tartaglioni is in there for the quadruple homicide, <laughs> homicide of four guys. Well, it's, I guess you couldn't do a quadruple homicide on three guys. Anyways, uh, uh, in a place called the Liquid Lounge. Liz, would you spell that for me? Uh, I can't remember. Just... L I C K Q I E Q U I D. Uh, wow, I misspelled that. It's a different. It's like a little bit of a trap. Uh, Jer- uh, Mr. Tattaglioni. The story goes: it's a little hazy. With some accomplices, lured four men into the Liquid Lounge, where he attempted to sell them cocaine. Allegedly, this is in Westchester County. Yes, uh, and when that did not. Go according to plan. Apparently, they weren't really down, although one gets the gut feeling they might have been some cartel guys. Uh, he shoots all four of them <laughs> and then buries them in his fucking backyard. In his yard. Yes, which is how he gets caught. Because, you know, I'm, <laughs> listener, I'm sure you're an intelligent person. You are a big donator to our Patreon. And you're thinking, if I was to kill four people, I wouldn't just bury them in my backyard like in a movie where you have the mounds of dirt and you're doing this shoveling and there's four bodies stacked like cordwood. Uh, listener, you would be wrong. That is precisely what our uh, ethnic uh, American friend... So he killed them execution style. Yes. At you could just bar. say he executed them. Well, I know, but it sounds like that more sound, dramatic yeah, it's when true, I say yeah. okay. So execution style, bam, 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 whatever. Uh-huh. Four bams. Over a quote-unquote cocaine deal that went bad. Yes. We've all been there. I have. Just kidding. Um... And then drove all those bodies, four those four bodies in his car, thirty minutes from the bar to his farm, where then he buried them in the bathroom. And his I mean pe- in his backyard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um his peep and neighbor saw him, was like, Hey, that guy looks like he's burying the f- bodies of four dead men and uh, called the police. One of Tartaglioni's accomplices was chased by the FBI. And by chase, I mean just pulled over. When he was pulled over, he took out a pistol and shot his brains out, which does not seem like... Um, maybe he's innocent. I don't know. Doesn't seem like we something also, an innocent person I, would I, do. I like, highly recommend that everyone Google image search this man right yes. now. Because he is... Yoked. A god among I wanna, men. I want to be <laughs> perfectly clear with the listener of this show. I am yoked. <laughs> I weigh 400 pounds. In muscle. Only. Have you seen uh, uh, Google Synthol? Google Synthol. I'm natural Synthol, and this guy still scares me. He's huge. So if he's this, like cartoon. He's cartoon huge. He's cartoon huge, and the sort of natural. I guess one gets when they put you. They read his name next to Jeffrey Epstein's with the word, you know, attempted suicide next to it. Is that this man uh, allegedly? which is Liz is alleging this um, <laughs> allegedly tried to choke Jeffrey Epstein to death at the behest of dot, dot, dot the cabal. Yeah. He looks like bronze age pervert, like drew a cartoon of an NYPD. Yeah. He officer. looks like if the bronze age pervert wasn't perverted. <laughs> um, so it's the bronze age, pap- bronze age papist as an Italian. We're the bronze age Patreon. Yes. So, um, it's, I think last night for a lot of people was their glimpse into the real world. Like a lot of people took the red pill last night because they realized yeah. that, all right, yeah, people make these jokes. There's this cabal and there's this There was whole a bit of thing. a rupture, yeah. perhaps, it an seems ideological like, rupture. Like the timeline that we were supposed to go on. Where this was just kind of all swept under the rug. No one thought of this again. Epstein sort of just, uh, you know, went into obscurity into oblivion in the prison system. Ruptured uh, with the gripping of two large hands around a pedophile's neck. Yeah, it's been great for the pod. Oh, absolutely wonderful. Yeah, shout out Nikki uh, Tartaglioni. Much love, brother. Please do not also try to kill me. Yeah, we had nothing to do with it. Um, so we are still uh, waiting to kind of hear back from this. I believe there uh, to hear, hear more news about this. Uh, the word is is that Jeffrey Epstein is now under 24-hour guard. It right. is shocking to me that that was not the case before. Well, they but, want to make sure he doesn't self-harm. Yeah, on, and, and straight up CW, for anyone listening to this, <laughs> uh, do not... I understand that like this this Epstein stuff, 
you know, he might have tried to hang himself. Do not also try to do this. You are not a pedophile. No one listened to this as a pedophile. So much love. Do not kill yourself. And if you are a pedophile, donate suicide to the Patreon. Suicide is not the way out. Yeah. No, we have a $50, I think, or $30 thing on the Patreon you can donate to. That doesn't absolve you, but it does get your name on a list, which will lead us to you. <laughs> it's like which, an indulgence. Yeah. And I will straight up citizens arrest you mm-hmm. and hand you over to the people's militia. By people, I mean... I, that my, myself, I will take you <laughs> and put you in some sort of cage. All right, all right, all right. I think the thing that's crazy is that, um, okay, so one, this, the story was broken by a woman, I can't remember her name, but she's a reporter for Us Weekly. Yeah. And my boots on the ground, uh-huh. and I have plenty of sauces, uh-huh. as I like to call them. Oh, well, that's a... Um... I lived in... Something Holly Weird for seven years, uh-huh. so I know a little thing or two. Yes, but that you were a child prostitute there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I um, actually was literally almost molested in Hollywood as a thirteen-year-old boy when I was a runaway. I got taken to a guy's apartment. He tried to put his hand on my crotch, and I took out a knife and then took his change jar uh, and ran away. My friends, who later came to pick me up, we went to his uh, door and carved "pedophile" in it with a knife, and then chased him down the street with chains. True story. Max was there. Is this a me too? Uh, I didn't think about it like that, but if that'll get more listeners to donate to the <laughs> Patreon, yes. Uh, um, so anyway, so she's an Us Weekly reporter. And this is interesting because, so from what I have been told and what I know, mm-hmm. the, a lot of the tabloids, the way that they operate is that they get their, or the the, the solid tabloids, which are Us Weekly and People. Yes. That their all of their sources are public relations like representatives yeah. yeah so it's not like so like um the other ones like in touch and mm-hmm. star or whatever they kind of just like make up whatever yeah i would but these ones are like really sourced and so it's not necessarily about whether or not the stories are true but that the people who are planting the stories want them want everyone to believe that they are true so you you're you're saying or you're you're maybe thinking that that these stories were planted by a PR agent of, of who? Epstein? Well, I'm just saying that... I'm not saying anything. Yeah. What I am throwing out... Yeah. Alleging. Alleging. Uh, what I'm possibly alleging... Yes. Is that... Something to think about is whether or not Epstein wants us to believe that he had an attempt on his life. Uh-huh. Rather than perhaps that really happening. Okay, so I see what you're saying here. Is that I don't know if that's what I believe, but I like that theory. This could be what I call informational disinformation. Exactly. Where it's actual true information, but it's being used in a disinformational context. Exactly. Okay, I understand. So um, what that would mean is that Jeffrey, our friend Jeff, fears for his life. You're talking about Jeff Epstein. Yes. Yeah. That Jeff is worried. Uh huh. Scared. Yes. In the fetal position. You know who else lives in New York? Who? The Clinton crime family. Well. It's, it is, it is, I want to be like totally clear here. It is fucking insane that someone tried to kill Jeffrey Epstein last night. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to take a moment to, to think, what, what? Dude, someone tried to kill, or Jeffrey Epstein tried to kill himself. E- either way, that is a lot. Because first of all, if anyone kills themselves from here on out, if you ever hear of any suicide, be it a, you know, a famous person, Chris Tucker, allegedly, <laughs> or one of your friends, it's fake. Yes. They were murdered. If Brace and I kill ourselves, yes. it's fake. We were murdered. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Epstein, it, it is, it, I find it really difficult to believe that Epstein wasn't under pretty constant guard. Um, and yes, yeah. like pedophiles, you know, their their social currency has declined in jail considerably uh, since mm. the their high since point orange the, is the new black came out. Exactly, they used to be kings <laughs> in there because people were like, "That's the most heinous crime ever." Fucking, you know, congrats. Uh, but yeah, since since the mass media has kind of gotten the bad word out about them, they're not doing so great. So it could be that this guy was just so enraged at Epstein's. I don't buy that. It's of course it's not true. No. Someone either tried to kill Epstein, and by someone I mean this uh, possibly allegedly Italian person, 
I mean, mafia person. <laughs> uh, allegedly or, Italian. Allegedly Italian. Or, uh, wait, well, who knows? It could be his, his father's last name. His father what could only be half Italian Malta? himself. Maltese? Yeah. That makes him a POC. <laughs> When it was announced that they were going to unseal a lot of the Epstein documents, Totaglioni was caught in his cell with a mini cell phone. Which, by the way, what is a mini cell phone? So I am picturing here a cell phone that fits inside of a human's asshole. Is this like a Metro PCS situation? Yeah, well, apparently it couldn't text, so very well could. <laughs> no, literally, they were like, we don't think it can text. It can only make voice, voice calls. So it's probably Is that what like, they said? Yeah. Uh, oh, so this is like a wire situation. This is like a... Well, like the show. Oh, the, the show. I'm like, yeah, it's actually wireless is the point no. of cell phones. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I only watched the. I, I found it troublesome, so I didn't finish it. Also, several seasons, which is a no-no for me. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Though. Yeah, it's like some crime ass shit. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. on the third, if we're putting this together in like a realistic way, on the third, another someone comes in with a cell phone in their ass or possibly a, or a correctional officer gives it to him. Uh, Totaglioni, he gets the call from, uh, I'm guessing, the Clinton uh, Global Initiative. or Hillary whoever, Clinton herself. Or, or Miss, Mrs., Mrs. Clinton herself. Crooked Hillary. Exactly. And uh, he uh, he takes the hit because on the, on the third, it was pretty obvious that Epstein was going down. I really, what's the timeline on this and Anthony Weiner getting back with Huma? Straight up, I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like, you know. <laughs> Dude, get her the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'll pot alone. Huma. Huma. Yeah, well, her friends call her Huma. Yeah. Anyway, Sorry. all I'm <laughs> saying is, it's a. I just want to know, because Anthony Weiner just got back together with Huma. Yeah. My man likes a cell phone. Yep. Oh, it could be a Weiner <laughs> phone. That's what I'm saying. Here's where you're wrong, sweetheart. Notice the crucial detail that that phone could not text. Yeah, no text. Literally, Anthony Weiner does nothing but text. <laughs> no Snapchat on the prison yeah. phone. Did he do Snap? I think so. Imagine Anthony Weiner just with like the dog mouth or like some Ugh. glitter. Oh, his, oh no! And his vein. Because you have you seen like a veiny puppy his filter? Arms are? If a man's got veiny arms, he's got a veiny cock. Weiner's based. Weiner's based in red pilled. Yeah. 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 He's, he's te- yeah. He's based in teen pilled. But, I mean, Wiener seems to be operating his own one-man ring outside of the Epstein <laughs> circles. And for that, that's it's why he was taken down. It's not a ring if it's one man. Well, yeah. Well, he's got a ring of people around him. Well, young people. But it's, it's yeah. I mean, Epstein is, he took down the competition with Wiener. <laughs> he, like, couldn't let this small business owner muscle in with us, the big box stores, if you know what I mean. All right. So, he gets the cell phone. They confiscate the cell phone. Two weeks later. Jeff rolls in. Jeff rolls in. Jeff train a coming. Choo choo. He's suddenly marks on his neck. Yep. Blue in the face. Oof. Like a smurf. In the fetal position. Oh, like Allegedly. Me. Allegedly a fetal. Allegedly. Uh-huh. He could have just been doing yoga. Honestly, he could have just been jacking off really good. <laughs> Actually, I don't even want to make that joke because he, he knows what he was thinking of. But it's, yeah, it's pretty fucking insane that they tried to kill Jeffrey Epstein literally last night. Yeah. Because no and matter failed. if it was... And failed. But the failure itself could be a message, possibly to yeah, us. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So, okay, so there's a couple, there's like a couple situations here. Mm-hmm. One, he tried to commit suicide. Yes. I don't believe it. Go on. I think Jeffrey wants to live. Joffrey Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> so second option. Keep going. Uh, someone called in a hit uh-huh. to Tartaglione. Uh-huh. And he failed. Ooh. Right? Yeah, he failed. Third option. Yes. Someone called in a hit to Tartaglione. Uh-huh. But didn't want him to finish the job. Okay. Just wanted to rough up the up. This is very dialectic thinking. This Dialectical is, thinking. Yes. Yeah. Um, so send a message to Mr. Jeffrey They're to all shut messages. the fuck up. They're all messages. Right? Yeah. Well, Epstein doesn't need to talk. He doesn't talk. Epstein is no fucking snitch. But That's what I would say, but <coughs> you never know what's going to happen to a desperate man. Yes. I mean, the thing is, it could be Ghislaine. Who knows? We're, I, I have a feeling we're going to find out more in the coming weeks 
And I hope that you'll stay with us. So, for... wait. Yeah. There's another option. Option four? Option four. Uh-huh. This is a PSYOP on part of Epstein. Yeah. Trying to make us think that someone tried to kill him. Oh, this is the double dialectical thinking. Yes. This is after you've done the first dialectical, yeah. now you've done the second dialectical. Now we're just uh, right on back. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, double on back. Yeah. Jeff says... How do I get in not just the podcast graces, yeah. but also the police graces? Because yes. I'm actually worried about my life. Uh huh. I need more protection. Oh, I'm going to fake a hit on myself. The imprisoned leader of the Kurdish PKK is on an island in the middle of the Mediterranean. It is the island prison. There is one prisoner on the island. It is him. The fact that the American government has to, haven't done the same for Jeffrey Epstein, who is the polar opposite of Abdul Ojalan, uh, is... <laughs> Is ridiculous. Epstein should be under like Bane level. I don't. I actually don't believe I've seen the Bane Batman movie, but under some sort of Batman level protection, where he has guards with shotguns and there's people yeah. around him at like, all times. Mm, straight jacket, mask. The like, Joker cannot get in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, look, one man is an island. Mm, yeah. So we don't really know. So he's already an island. That's what I'm saying. At I least really, psychologically. I'll be honest with you. Actually, I kind of regret saying that Jeffrey Epstein should be put on an island considering. He you know, really already is. Well, he I mean, was little St. James. Quite famously on one. Yes. I mean, existentially, he's still on little St. James. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, Queen, I'm about to go off. This information contained in is that front me of me. My queen? The information in front of me right now. This Manhattan shit is is literally pulling every hair off of my body, putting it into a ball and shoving that ball in my mouth. You talking about uh, New York Magazine's special Jeffrey Epstein issue? Yes. It is... I am covered in sweat, and I am <laughs> using that sweat as a lubricant to slide down the hill of knowledge into the pit of the mind. Because this is fucking freaking me out. This it's isn't even freaky deaky, baby. So uh, okay, allegedly, wait. let's pull back for a second. I can't pull back. Pull out, baby. Okay, because I'm about to word nut unless you really <laughs> slow this down. Okay, so New York Magazine this week published cover story and a bunch of news stories about Jeffrey Epstein. I want to be clear, I've also been profiled in New York Magazine. Oh well, oh my! Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Anyway, so one of the big pieces is um, looking into Jeffrey Epstein's little black book. Are you talking about the little black book that his butler had? Uh, yes. So, like like many men of my religion, Jeffrey Epstein had a butler. A man <laughs> named Alfredo Rodriguez. Alfredo? Alfredo Rodriguez. Well, that's actually kind of mixing Italian and Spanish. I like it. Yeah, it's good. Uh, and the bad thing about it is that it's like 100%, 99% certain that he probably helped Jeffrey Epstein do Jeffrey Epstein stuff, if you know what I mean. But like Butler style? Uh, <laughs> possibly, yeah, yeah, yes, he was, yes, he was the Alfred to Epstein's Batman. Um, <laughs> so Rodriguez stole Jeffrey Epstein's little black book. See, he's and, a good boy. Yeah, well, you know, it's kind of a redemption story. He referred to it <laughs> as, uh, his life insurance. Um, Rodriguez tried to sell the little black book to the defense lawyer, or excuse me, to the, uh, to the prosecution in the Epstein case for $50,000. I believe they turned it down. Or at least it's like to sell not it. that much money. I will. They didn't take it. So yeah, <laughs> I would have taken, I mean, I'd pay $50,000 for it right now. Uh, Rodriguez of course, uh, was arrested, uh, of course, and then did 18 months in jail and paid a fine. That is, uh, let me remind listeners, five months longer than Jeffrey Epstein did in jail. And I have a feeling Rodriguez did not get work released to work as Epstein's butler. Um, no. What happened to him? Well, he got the same cancer that Hugo Chavez got, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, he got cancer. I hate when you get that cancer. I hate when you get cancer that the CIA gives you. I know. It's that one scary it's type cr- of cancer. It's that type of cancer that only two people get, and that is Hugo Chavez and Alfredo Rodriguez, <laughs> and probably a lot of other people don't know about. Uh, I'm not kidding about this, by the way. Hugo Chavez did not die a natural death. No. Much love. Rest in peace. Um 
Alfredo Rodriguez found out he had cancer. Six months later, he was dead of that cancer. That's pretty crazy, huh? Mm. At age 60. Uh, this black book found, it way, found its way into Gawker and then later on to Scribd, which is where, as I, a subscription having gentleman, uh, read it in its entirety. <laughs> sure. And now there is this, uh, uh, there was also certain names in that black book that were circled in red ink by uh, Rodriguez. Yes. The names of those people were people who were, let's say, heavily involved in the uh, unorthodox activities of Mr. Jeffrey Epstein. Yes. Most of the names are redacted. Or all the addresses and things are redacted. But yeah. you can I mean, find the unredacted version. Not that I'm suggesting, but if you'd like to, you can find it online. So there's so many crazy names in this little black book. And we're going to go through some of the highlights. Literally, the first one is the least crazy name, though. <laughs> <laughs> this should surprise absolutely no one except for every girl I've ever dated who made me watch oh that stupid... Oh, my God, stupid... That's, that's me because I'm like, this man's innocent. Yeah, every... <laughs> I, I don't know if it's the type of women I see. My current girlfriend, I don't believe, is of this mindset. But I will say that 99 out of the 100 women I've had sex with... Uh, <laughs> Believe that Woody Allen is somehow innocent because he made fucking Vicky Cristina Barcelona, which sucked shit. Um, yes, sucked we're ass. talking about Woody Allen. He's numero uno. Yes. In this little black book. That old codger c- <laughs> I can say that. That's our word. You can delete that. <laughs> what should surprise you and what certainly surprised me is the young lady who Woody Allen famously dated when she was 14. What's her name? I don't, uh, I don't know, actually. Oh. Bobby Christina Englehart? Yes. Miss Englehart, the young Miss Englehart, who Woody Allen, when he was in his- That's right, when she was 16. Uh, I believe a little younger than that. No, 16. Oh, well, that's what she said, at least. I can tell he's lying, or she is, too. <laughs> uh, she, uh, dated the much older Woody Allen. How old was he? In his 40s, I believe? 42? I mean, I think that's fine. Yes, you do. So you can date my father. <laughs> Let's keep going with this. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm like a bit more European about these things. Liz, you're th <laughs> the age difference. I'm not. Oh my god, do not put that on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> because Liz, you're 23 years old. Thank and you. Beautiful. That's you, what you should say. You actually straight up look 16. Honestly, like, you look so good for 23. I don't even know why you made me bleep it when I said it earlier, which is the number <laughs> I said. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Miss Inglehart. The young Miss Inglehart, who Woody Allen dated when he was like 100 fucking years old, 42 years old. <laughs> Whatever. I know it's not illegal, but it's still weird to date a nebbish Jew to begin with. Although women, if you're listening to this, it's it's so good. It's <laughs> women. Honestly, you will love it. It's totally weird when Woody Allen does it, but when you do it, it's totally normal. Oh, come on, dude. Okay, so this was the um, inspiration for his character, Manhattan. Yeah, Manhattan, which, by the way, that movie fucking sucks. No, it's a great movie. I knew this was going to happen. Women love, be, <laughs> women be loving Woody. No, that shit sucks. Look, we like the Jews. Yeah, yes. they. Which, by the way, again, I would like to thank G hyphen D for that, but it's... <laughs> It's, it's so that whatever, everyone knows that the Englehart uh, was the inspiration for this woman. What you might not know <laughs> is that Englehart later went to work for fucking Jeffrey Epstein as his personal assistant. And what have Jeffrey Epstein's personal assistants have historically done? I have no idea. Space intentionally left blank, but with the word allegedly floating around somewhere <laughs> near it. Let's move on. The next name, Prince Andrew. Oh, Prince Andrew. The Prince Duke. Andrew's proven, right? That's not even allegedly anymore. It's not an alleged. No. This is pictures. the Duke of York. Yes. Duke, 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 pedophile, file, <laughs> file, pedophile. Wait, this is really <laughs> weird. Um, so this is a quote. Jeffrey had Andrew put on a pair of sweatpants for the uh -huh. first time in his life. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with these people? He usually wears tights. <laughs> it was Jeffrey who taught Andrew how to relax. 
I love honestly. I do love to suck off my homies, but I feel like they mean something more sinister than that. <laughs> the royals are so fucked up. Monarchists don't trust these people. Yeah, you're on watch. People who believe that there should be a king, your time is up. So one of the craziest things about um, Prince, Prince Andrew, and I keep telling you about this, and you think I'm lying, which is crazy, is that you are a um, woman. Sarah Ferguson. The Duchess of York. Dude, there is has... no one named Sarah Ferguson. <laughs> this is the part I think she's lying about. That someone, she calls her Fergie, dude. Yes, Fergie's the lady for the he... Black Eyed Peas. No, this, she's the original Fergie. So she, before, she, yes. so Fergie replaced her in the Black Look, Eyed Peas? I grew up in England. I know what I'm talking about. Okay. You did? Yeah. How can you don't fake an accent like the guy from Current Affairs? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. It was discovered that Sarah... Ferguson, the perennially indebted Duchess of York, Fergie to her Weight Watchers fans. She was a big Weight Watchers person. Ooh. So the Duchess of York had accepted 15,000 pounds from Epstein to pay off one of her creditors, allegedly. So it has already been reported, or it was reported at the time, in all of the British tabloids. And the British tabloids, by the way, are so much more ruthless than American tabloids. It is. Lit- they're like vicious crows. It's crazy. I know. I've had to sue several of them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But it did come out in the British tabloids that uh, Ghislaine Maxwell's father, Robert Maxwell, was a um, Mossad agent. Yeah. No, they're, they're, they're legit. There are there. strong libel laws over there. So do our <laughs> British listeners, please tune out immediately. Um, no, but it, so it came to light in the British tabloids that, uh, people had asked her, she had basically had paid or had accepted money for renting out Prince Andrew. Renting out Prince Andrew. How? Like for like sexual Sex. things. Wow. Yes. So she pimped a prince? Basically. But here's my question. Ladies is pimps too. I've always said, in fact, Ladies I've written a song pimps named too. that. Um, 15,000 pounds isn't that? I mean, I guess that's like 400,000 American dollars. No, that's like $32,000. That is fucking nothing. She's a royal? That's what I'm saying. Like, where is their money? Where did it go? Yeah. Well, it did say perennially indebted. No, but I know. But where did it go in the first place? Probably to buying crowns and such. Lands, titles, etc. No, you just get that. You just get that? Yeah, they just fucking take it from the people. That's what the whole monarchy thing is all about. Oh, I didn't... I thought it was just... What? I thought that was kind of like a bit that the British people did. No. They're actually the king and stuff? No, they're... No, Fergie and... and, and um. Yeah, she's a singer. And, <laughs> and Andrew aren't the king and queen, but they're part of the royal family. Oh, and the there's royal... multiple ones. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Do you know who Doug Band is? No. What do you get banned for? He um, was an intern for bah, 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 Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton? Mm, Bill Pre- Lolita Express Clinton? Prezi Clinton. Ooh. Um, who he started off as like a bag carrier intern and worked his way to the top, baby. So would you to the call point a- where he was a founding member of the Clinton Global Initiative. So uh, careful listeners will have heard the words Clinton Global Initiative mentioned several times on this podcast. And on sometimes podcast. it's a euphemism. Sometimes yes. it's not. So when you Clinton globally initialize something, that means you child molest it. Um, Clinton Global Initiative. That is, we got to do a whole episode on that. Because literally every scumbag in the United States of America and abroad is, seems to be a member of the fucking Clinton Global Initiative. If you have ever even looked askance at the tushy of a young woman, you are in the Clinton Global Initiative. If you have a trafficked girl from Bosnia, you are in the Clinton Global Initiative. So yeah, so he was, yeah, so he was in the Clinton Global Initiative. He was definitely on Epstein's plane a bunch. He's in the logs. Mm-hmm. Um, and he also... Um, leaked emails show that Band and Chelsea Clinton herself yeah. were trading accusations about conflict of interest over influence of their parents. Wait, Chelsea Clinton was what? So it's, like it's Chelsea Clinton parents. and Doug Band having a little like internal conflict. You know what they should the just emails. do is they should just get over it. Get on a plane together, go to an island and take a vacation. What kind of plane? Just any plane. What Possib- island? Possibly one that belongs to Dyncor. What, uh, what of- island? Mm-hmm. Let's try Big St. James this time. Yeah, mix it up. Let's roll down the list, honey. 
Um, okay, so just to run through a couple names because but we don't need to meditate on all of them. But um, LOL, Alec Baldwin, mm-hmm. of fucking course. Alec Baldwin, who in, who interviewed Ju- the journalist Julie Brown on his podcast. Which Mr. He does, Drumpf himself. <coughs> he does in front of a live studio audience like a motherfucking prick. This asshole. He, he, he literally says... He, he talks about it in in the show. He's like, you know, I went up to Julie backstage and I said, Julie, you know, I know my name is in, is in Epstein's black book, but I don't know how it got in there. I've never talked to him. Did he say him. that? He said that. He said that both to her and then later recounted Didn't that. he call his daughter like a slut? Well, yeah. But I he's mean, just a bad parent. I okay. don't know. My parents call me a uh, Another guy in here who you might remember, Steve Bannon. So Steve Bannon is like 100% allegedly by other people, not me, a child molester, right? I mean, he looks like he definitely has drank virgin blood. Yeah. No, he doesn't. He just looks like he needs to drink virgin blood. <laughs> no, that's I'm, the... P- Peter Thiel, like, feeds off of virgin blood. Yeah. If Peter Thiel isn't a child molester, I will molest Peter Thiel. Can <laughs> Wait, I say no, that? no, I don't think that's right. He's an adult. I don't think that's how that it's works. It's only illegal. <laughs> I gotta look into this. Get me David Boys. Um, okay, so Brace has a thing for Peter Thiel. Steve Bannon, like... You know what he's been banning himself from? Adults. Um, Steve Bannon. Let me say that again. You know who he's been banning himself from? Having sex with adults. Stupid. Uh, so <laughs> Bannon is not no stranger to controversy. I believe there was oh, something really? about... I, I have never heard anything about him. Oh, no, political stuff aside. I mean, he's a <laughs> Leninist. I agree with that kind of stuff. It's fine. <laughs> me, him, and Murray Rothbard. Uh but Bannon, I believe, once rented a house and did a little bit of damage to it. Liz, can you take us from there? Oh, yeah. He, um, oh, God, what was it? He rented this house to- Badass move, by the way. Um, Never owned. Where was it? It was like Florida, right? I think so. I mean, that's so seedy already. Who that's rents just... that fucking house in Florida? <laughs> what do you need to do there? Anyway, so he rents a house. Um, the property is damaged, like- Incredibly. There's like all these Adam weird photos online. Yeah, it looks like it the is. The neighbors are saying that he was trying to like, that he, or trying, I don't know, that he was filming porn. Mm-hmm. He, this, this is before Breitbart when he was like an entertainment guy. Yeah. Because, you know, he owns Seinfeld rights. Um, they say that the bathtub, okay, wait. So the bathtub was visibly destroyed. Mm-hmm. And they think it was by acid. Yeah. Because they can't figure out how a bathtub would get to the point that this bathtub was in. Like, so that's how insane the bathtub is. So I'm just going to be honest with you guys. If I walked into a house and I saw a bathtub with acid, I'd be like, oh, someone dissolved a child's body in here. Not saying that's what happened in this case, but if I saw a bathtub like that, that's what I would think would happen. Either that or Liz says that people think he was making meth. I, yeah. have, I have probably injected a metric ton of meth into my veins. Uh, never tasted a hint of acid in there. I like this. I'm looking at this article about it right now, and it says, everyone from a handyman to an exterminator told the new tenant that the Bannon-era tenants had been using the house to film porn movies. Okay. This means Sex there workers, is the then. there is very real and very disturbing possibility that Steve Bannon porn films exist. Well, he could have just been However, directing. it's still unclear whether Bannon himself was actually living in the house. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So maybe he was just renting it I out. don't understand all the sex worker shaming stuff going on here, <laughs> but let's we'll fly on past it. Who else um, we got on the list? Oh my God, so many names. Okay, so there's like four Bismarcks. Bismarcks. Yes, Bismarcks. Like Von, Von Bismarcks. Von Bismarcks. Yes. This is what they've been up to. So this is like a Heart be... of Iron 5 plot line. Yes, these would be, uh, I'm assuming, descendants of Otto von Bismarck. The one and only. Yes. Mr. Kulturkampf. Yep. Um, Didn't know that this was still a thing. Well, call me a member of the German Social Democratic Party because I support them. (laughs) Um, So apparently... uh, Ancient that royals. That is fucking insane so that the crazy. fucking Bismarcks are in there. I, I don't even know what that... I, I don't know how to interpret that. Yeah. that's There's still Bismarcks? Here's my favorite, one of my favorites. Uh-huh. David Blaine. David Blaine. Mr. David Blaine. So, the magician, right? Uh, Was his name circled? I don't know, actually. It doesn't say when whose names were circled. Mm-mm. That is itself suspect, and I'm putting the names of the authors of this article on I believe that David Blaine, 
was a member of the Pussy Posse. The Pussy Posse. Would you like to expound on that? And the why Pussy am I not Posse a was the the nickname mm-hmm. of the uh, boys DM oh. that was. Leonardo DiCaprio, Tobey Maguire, et cetera, et cetera. In Leonardo the 90s. DiCaprio could get so much more pussy than Tobey Maguire, or David Blaine. Well, that's why they're in the posse. Actually, yeah, I guess that's true. You got to help out your homies. Um, and also, do you know who's in the pussy posse now? Because the pussy posse still still, still exists. Extant. Yeah, it's still. Um, it's definitely the summer of dudes rock. So yeah. pussy posse is definitely still active. Who's in it now? Um, Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill is in the Pussy Posse. Jonah Hill is like the now he's like GQ sweetheart. Is he? Yeah, he's like style icon. You know, he's a kind of fat guy from near Marin. I'm a kind of fat guy. I'm just kidding. I, I weigh like 140. Um, <laughs> do you think that like the Pussy Posse is open to podcasters? Do you think that'd be like? Yeah, Pussy Podcast Posse. Okay, that's pretty good. Tr- the Pussy Pod piece. Posse. Okay, that no, doesn't work. Pussy casters. That's better. Yeah. Well, I'm a But it also caster, sounds but... awful. Yeah, yeah. That's um, fucking crazy. So Jonah Hill's in the black book? He's not in the black book, <laughs> but I think we should start that rumor. Yeah, okay. Uh, so Jonah allegedly. Hill could be in the black book because we don't have the full. I mean, actually, I do have a full list. But... Allegedly. Yeah. But I do like that. Okay, so if David Blaine is in here yeah. and David Blaine is Pussy Posse. Is there a Pussy Posse I think posse there's got to be. And Cause... you know who's done a lot of Weinstein films? Uh-huh. I, I literally don't know. The fucking Pussy Posse. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, I don't know really what Weinstein films there are. Miramax? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't, it's like the big. It's like they show a thing at the beginning of a movie. I don't like oh, remember Oh, for God's part. sakes, let's get a, a professional in here. I, I can't am a professional this. podcaster. The next name? Who? Tony Blair. Tony fucking Blair? So here is something that I delight in repeating. Uh, during the um, sort of media build up around this there was a quote from one of the lawyers i believe who was like there will be a lot of famous people some celebrities and one very well known uh prime minister in there and everyone was like oh it's the israeli guy everyone's like oh it's gonna be ehu barak the israeli prime minister first of all it can't be him well whatever because he's not famous i'm not even sure if he was prime minister (laughs) uh and second of all i had to look up his name before we just did that right then it's a hundred percent allegedly I'm not saying this. Others are 100% Tony fucking Blair. I want Tony Blair to go down for this so fucking Here's a little mad. interesting what Epstein connection too. Les Wexner was like a huge proponent of the American invasion of Iraq and like used all his resources to push for it. The idea of like, like what's so funny too is that, um, so one thing I like about British politics is uh-huh. that usually what happens is when a prime minister or a politician is disgraced. They like, they like, you know, slink off into yeah. like obscurity. Yeah. Like when Cameron resigned. Yeah. He was basically like, oh, well, nevertheless, <laughs> you don't want me. Now I go. Yeah. And like, another you've never had, heard from him again. Had to hump. Exactly. You've never heard from him again. The dangle my dongle. Fucking Tony Blair, yes. because he's this fucking DLC swine. <laughs> Like, he is this fucking zombie that will not die. Like, he keeps coming back and back yes, and back. Yes, yes. Like, he is not... So, if we... We, meaning us, the people... Uh-huh, the gumshoes of the world. Can get him on this fucking Epstein shit. Like, I want to burn this motherfucker and salt the earth and get Tony Blair... At- Get him out of here. I have written 735 unhinged emails to Jeremy Corbyn in the past three days about this. Not a single reply, possibly because of my Semitic sounding last name, which is Belden. Um, I'm going to talk to Bojo. Bojo? Yeah. Oh, Boris John. Mm. Son. Yes. A Turk. Did you know that? Is he? He's Turkish. Congratulations. Yeah. Well. Congratulations to number 10. Diversity is important. We got to get our mean up in that bitch. Um, We're going to talk to Bojo. We're going to say Brexit, no deal. As long as Blair goes down. Honestly, I will head to Brussels and resume my post at the head of the EU if that happens. Tusk, David, move out of the way. David fucking Copperfield is also in here. David lot, Copperfield? A lot of magicians. The please, sir, can I have some more guy? No, That's the Oliver magician. Twist. That's Oliver Twist. That's Oliver Twist? Who wrote that book? Um, Charles 
Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens? Where am I getting David Copperfield? That's also Charles That's Dickens. also a Charles Dickens. Oh, so book. it's also a Charles Dickens? Look at that. They call me Mr. Literature. Uh, David Copperfield is in there? Yes. Wow, you know, with all these guys matching, you'd think they could have made their names disappear off the book list of pedophiles. Oh, boy. Well, we got Alan Dershowitz, obviously. Wait, Alan Dershowitz is in the pedophile book. Allegedly. Oh my gosh, Minnie Driver. That's Minnie kind Driver? of sad. I know. I loved her brother Screw's work. I don't know. You what haven't you're seen talking Goodwill about. Hunting? Goodwill Hunting? Yeah. No. Ugh. Okay, forget you. I have seen Goodwill Hunting. In of fact, I'm you in have. Goodwill Hunting. No, you're not. I'm the guy who's hunting the Goodwill. <laughs> um, Malcolm Gladwell. X? Malcolm Gladwell. Well, this is something that we've known about for a little while here. We need to talk about this motherfucker. I don't even know what to say about Malcolm Gladwell. Well, he's probably, probably pretty sad, well, because his name is uh, on the list of uh, child molesters in the child Do you think book. that he had to make clear his tipping point? Honestly, I feel like Gladwell and some of these, some of the other characters of his caliber, they were like kind of kept around as, as arm candy. For Mr. Epstein. No, I'm serious to raise his profile. It's so sad because like Malcolm Gladwell is, and I mean this with like all due respect. He's a New York Times bestselling author. Yes. Easy. A um, supposedly, allegedly smart person, Mm -hmm. although I haven't really seen evidence to that. But um, so I mean this with all due respect. Oh, he's got a fucking podcast? But he is like totally hideous. Yeah, he looks like shit. I'm look- <laughs> he looks like, I'm looking at these three pictures of him at the top of, of uh, the Google image thing. He looks like three different kinds of wretched Jews. By the way, I'm Jewish. <laughs> he, he, it, he looks like, it's like crazy. It's like someone made a golem and just like slashed its face every so often. His forehead gets bigger by the day. Mommy, I've never, I'm not a hat guy. Certainly not a tri-corner hat that covers a large area of your head. But this, I've never seen a man who so desperately needed to dress like an American revolutionary soldier <laughs> in order to distract from his hideous visage. Oh, he is, he's very unfortunate looking. So he's here's my question. Yeah. Was he on the plane because he needed to be? Holy, uh, holy shit. Uh, I believe, is he a Catholic? No. Oh, never mind. He's not. No. Uh, he's a podcaster, which means... Yeah, he was on the fucking plane. I mean, I know he's on the plane. Yeah. He said he was on the plane. He's on the uh, Yeah, logs. there's pictures of him. Yeah, 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 What yeah. I'm saying was, is he on the plane because he needed to be on the plane? Uh, it's So the CIA has long cultivated journalists. In fact, they had a lot of agents and but assets. But he's an work. idiot. Yeah, well, that doesn't so. Okay. It doesn't mean he like works at the CIA and like goes in there. They cultivate him and they feed him shit, disinformation. Mm. So it could be very well that Epstein himself was running Gladwell. What if that Epstein is was conjecture. just like a huge fan of like? He just loved Gladwell. Yeah. He was like, oh man, we really got to talk about like. Can you put someone in double jail? <laughs> Because that would be the, the, the apt punishment Fuck. for that. Someone needs to... Actually, I think... Okay, wait. I need to pull this up. Because I think that Malcolm Gladwell wrote an, a piece. A critic at large, September 24th, 2012. 2012. So yeah. this is after Mr. Malcolm Gladwell was on the sex bus. Uh-huh. Or as we call it, the Lolita Express. In plain view, how child molesters get away with it. A piece in the New Yorker. Jesus like, Christ! This is a real if, if I, did I did it, it moment. Absolutely, if I did it, yeah. What the fuck? Hit it in plain sight. It's in plain view. Plain view. On the plane. Yeah. Viewing. Which plane? How the, plain? The plane. And very plain. Very plain. And probably viewed. Viewed by Epstein. A lot of views. DVD. A lot of views on the CDs uh-huh. of recorded videos. Yes. Uh, John Kerry. Jonathan Kerry is on here. Wow. Husband to the Heinz. Catch up. My, my, man, my man is taking a swift boat to the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> to pedophile island. Jesus Christ. That man. is... Man. John Kerry fucking sucks. John Kerry fucks. We don't need to say anything more about that. Yeah, that's... John Kerry, he's a fucking op. Um, of course... For God's sakes, Henry Ooh. Kissinger. He just shows up in every fucking article. Henry Kissinger himself? <laughs> the one and only. He, he, he and Dershowitz probably just look at each other and like, oh, man. 
This is what it's like. It's like looking in a mirror. They look like shit. I cannot wait for Kissinger to die. Everyone says that, but I'm going to be bummed. It's... <laughs> Why? Because he... Because... You don't have anything to look forward to anymore. I know, but he'll get to be whole pop before I do. In heaven? In... No. <laughs> Pol Pot. I know, I said in heaven. No, yeah, but I think Pol Pot's a great Maoist. So why would Kissinger be there? Because he repents at the end, dumbass. Is Pol Pot on the list? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, check. Wow, Tom Pritzker. What a surprise that the Pritzkers would be on here. Okay, yeah, well. I'm so surprised. <laughs> That's like a huge family. There's just Don't a worry big about family? It. Mm. Let's do interesting ones. Okay. Joan Rivers. Joe Rivers? Rivers. River? Joan Rivers? <laughs> yes. I thought you were saying Joe Rivers. I'm like, no. cool. That's Joe like a Rogan. fellow funny guy we can talk to. Jo- Joan Rivers is on yes. there? I, I believe it. I believe it. Was it, didn't Roy Cohn date Barbara Walters or something? He, yeah, they were, she, he called her my fiance. So who the fuck do you think was Joan Rivers' B- Roy Cohn? Epstein, probably. Fuck, Joan Rivers probably saw some crazy shit. Yep. Yep. The Marvelous Mrs. Mizell was supposed to be about Joan. That's true. Really? I never but, saw it, but I heard that there was a lot of pedophilia in it. Yeah. But um, Joan Rivers wouldn't say shit. That's why I respect her. Because she would not rat out one of the most prolific pedophiles in human history? Mm-hmm. <sighs> Women be shopping. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, Charlie Rose. Charlie, yeah, all right, <laughs> not, all right. Shocker. Next. I mean, it's just so funny because it's like... Of course, the like, I mean, his Me Too stuff was not salacious at all. I don't know. He like jacked off when people walked in his office, right? No, that was um, Matt Lauer. Matt Lauer. That is such a crazy thing to do. No, the Matt Lauer thing was really crazy because he had a button. They call that the reverse Louis. Yeah, he had a button on his desk that Uh was like, now the door is locked. What? Yes, <laughs> Matt Lauer had is the same, a. Is this the same guy that installed the same guy installed that has installed the bar on the outside of the temple door? I mean, basically. What the fuck? Yeah, so he personally had a button installed in his desk yeah. that could lock the door <laughs> from his desk. Feel like that should have set off some alarm bells in HR. Yeah, that's like a sex crime. Yes. That's a sex crime. Yes. That's a pre-crime sex crime. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that wasn't Charlie Rose. <laughs> what did Charlie Rose do? Charlie Rose was just a fucking creep. Oh, he's just like, I love your tits. Yeah, I think, I think it possibly went into some other stuff. I love your tits and pussy. He like, invite his assistant to, like, come in and dictate notes while he was in the shower. Yes, okay, I remember the road. Yeah, he's yeah. like, old man grossy. Yeah. But like, he wasn't, like, ra- I don't think he raped anyone or anything. He's just old man grossy. He's like, he, like, thinks about it, but, like, is too pussy to do it. Not saying you should do it. Maybe we should cut this part. <laughs> but yeah, like yeah. So, but fuck Charlie Rose anyways, because all these people make me oh, sick. Oh yes. You know who else is in here? Who? Chuck Schumer, baby. Schumer's in there. Yes. Oh my God. Listen, I just want to make it clear from my people, from the from the anti-Zionist Jewish people of the world. We're sorry for all these people. <laughs> uh, their weird love for Israel has has made them do some strange things, some things that possibly the rest of us are not too proud of. But forgive us. Uh, that Chuck Schumer is no surprise. I mean, that man is such a fucking Chuck Schumer. I don't think was molesting children though. Chuck Schumer's the guy you got. No, he's like Chuck Schumer is the kind of guy who just like stands at. He's like a wallflower. Mm. Like, he doesn't get asked to dance at prom. But I, I, I firmly believe that every single politician, including the ones you're thinking of, yes, her too, are all motherfucking perverts. Uh, Chuck Schumer, though, I don't think was... I don't get the... I get dark energies from him, but they have he, a different hue. Yeah, he's dark, but he's it's like not a sexual energy. No, there is not a drop of cum in that man's body. Ugh, and not because he ejaculated, because he just never produced any. He's dry as a bone. Power, 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 power. Who else we got in here? Um. Kevin Spacey. Spacey. All right. Let me be frank. <laughs> Kevin Spacey. We need to, we need, 
Everyone needs to watch rewatch this video. Before you do anything else, pause this podcast right now, especially if you're driving. Put your phone up <laughs> right in front of where the road is. <laughs> Your iPad too, if you have it, do a double screen and watch Kevin Spacey's. Let me. It's just go to his Twitter. It's the last thing he tweeted. Never nothing. Never did anything else. Had nothing else to say. Spacey. Spacey. His his fingerprints are all over this. Okay, wait. So let's just like let's um rewind for a second. So Spacey gets uh me too. Yes. Hard. Hard. A hard me too. Hard me too from multiple angles. Yes. <laughs> Front and back. <laughs> He goes down. Yes. Rightfully so. Yeah, it sounds awful. Horrible. Uh, it's all underage boys that are, Absolute you know, parties, yeah. Hollywood. Look, friends like I of said, his friends or kids of I his lived friends. in Holly Weird. I've heard a lot about these types of parties. Uh-huh. How do you <laughs> think I got into the X-Men movies? <laughs> <laughs> so Spacey goes down. Then... He posts this, like, YouTube response, unprovoked. Oh, so unprovoked. Just him vlogging. Yes. He's a vlogger. There is a really funny, if you watch it, notice how there's, like, a cafe sound, like, sound. Yeah, they added in, like... Even uh, though he's just in his kitchen, like, yeah. clinking forks and, like, light music playing, even though it's just him making, like, a turkey in his kitchen. And, like, an assistant. Yes. So he gives this like long monologue in the character of Frank, which from the show House of Cards. Thank you. I've never seen it, by the way. I'm not stupid. Um, lame. So he gives this long monologue about how he's not di- he hasn't died and he's not going anywhere. And you would be so you would be so sorry to dismiss me because of all the things we've been through. But we're so smart that we don't necessarily believe things that people just say. Yes. Or allege. So it's like really cryptic and crazy. And I remember when it first came out, I was like, uh, this is fucking weird. And yeah. I just thought it was like weird. But now, watch it now. Yeah, watch it in, in light, light of, of him being... all this Epstein stuff. And it'll it, fucking creep you out. Watch it with one thing in mind. A flight in Africa with Bill Clinton... Jeffrey Epstein, Chris Tucker, and Kevin Spacey. A real flight that happened. Watch it with that in mind. Also, we need to talk about the mug. The mug. Mug up. So at the end, take note of the mug that he's using. And there's a a kind of quote or like a placard on the mug that's facing the camera. It's from the Queen's Jubilee, right? Yes. Commemorative mug. Of the... uh, It's like a coronation or something? Yeah, of the Queen's coronation. And many, I'm not saying myself, but many alleged believe that what he's uh, intoning is a uh, threat or a warning to the royals Mm -hmm. that if he goes down... Everyone goes down. Yes. Wow. Wow. So I encourage, we'll link to it in the pod. Mm -hmm. We'll link to the YouTube and you got to watch it. It is astounding. I'll do a live read of it next episode. Oh, we should. Yeah. Oh my God. Ken Starr. Ken Starr. All right. Yeah. Ken Starr is all, his finger, he's a dirsh in this. He's just a dirsh with less uh, access to New York Times op-ed. Oh my gosh. Larry Summers is in here. Larry Summers is in there. Yeah. I've got a fucking thing about Larry Summers. Yeah. Well, Warren's going down if he goes down. I I mean Larry Summers. Yeah. Mr. President of Harvard. Yeah. Mr. Executive at the World Bank. Oh. Mr. President or Vice President of the Economic Council under Obama. Oh, very cool. Mr. Associate Secretary of the Treasury under Bill Clinton. Awesome. Dude, that guy sounds like a chill guy. That is Fuck this guy. I would love to go on a fucking tropical I vacation with him. I would impl- any of any politically minded yeah. <laughs> uh, listeners, I implore you to look into Larry Summers' role in the 2008 financial crisis. Yes. Um, I would love for him to go down. He pedophiled the country. Basically. Uh, there's someone in here named Donald Trump, but I don't think we need to go over that. Trump? Yeah, I don't know. He's not important. I didn't know we were talking about innocent men in this. Yeah. Well, we got Trump's Trump's on the list. We'll get to him in another one. We're going to probably have a special episode dedicated There solely. is a lot more about... Everyone keeps busting out the one quote from Trump where it's like, oh, he likes young girls, blah, blah, blah. As much no, as I do. that's, that's that basic. That is the tip of the Trump 
I that is if if we're if we're if we're describing here an egg shaped penis, that is the very tip of it. That is your urethra of the penis. Trump is is so wrapped up in this he can't even see himself. Yeah, no, we're gonna have to do a special Trump about the Professor Doctor as yes, I call him. Professor Doctor Colonel Donald Trump. Yes. Um, and last but not least, and this is a little bit upsetting, uh-huh. but I think we all need to face the truth. Slava Zizek. <laughs> Close. No, we're not on the Balkans episode yet. Ellie Wiesel. Ellie Wiesel is not. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm about to go off. It's in here, baby. Uh, first of all, Ellie Wiesel has, uh, is a, if there is ever a man who thought Palestinians were like bugs it is Mr. Fucking Wiesel. I am so sorry that the Holocaust happened. I am not kidding about this. Like my grandfather was was. I'm not gonna make a joke here. My grandfather went to the camps uh, as a U.S. soldier, Jewish guy, freaked him out. Blah blah blah. Uh, Wiesel, just because he did that, does not make him a good person. Wiesel is a fucking scumbag who basically wanted to nuke Tehran, wanted to throw every Palestinian into the sea, and also. Like, molested women until the day he died, basically. There's, he famously did it in, like... Well, he got assaulted in an elevator here, actually. Yeah, it's not a good look for Mr. Wiesel. Yeah. So that's um, a good overview of the Black Book. Yeah. I mean, there are so many more names in here, and we'll put a link to the scribbed uh, sort of... Um, there is both a actual scans of the pages... And then there are the um, there is like a, a a version that someone just typed up because it's a lot more legible that way. Remember that that someone literally died to put this book in people's hands. A man stole this book. A man who was probably not a very good person to begin with stole this book, tried to sell it, was rebuffed, jailed for it, and then died of the Hugo Chavez cancer. In order for us to be able to read these names today. In order for us to have this podcast. And I, and I want people to remember, too, that, yes, this book is, this is some crazy names. It is insane that Tony Blair, that this will be the death of Blairism, finally, uh, at the hands of, of me. So. Ironic that it comes at the hands of a Jew, me. Um, but it is, this is nothing to, like, this is, this doesn't begin to sort of pierce the veil that we need to pierce. Because... There are so much, there are so many forces beyond this. This is not, and we want to stress this again, this is not just about a pedophilia ring. This is not just about one guy pimping out uh, models and underage women to rich sickos. This is about an operation by intelligence agencies that span the globe, that span decades, that span other intelligence operations, and that is still going on to this very day. They may have cut ties with Epstein, but they have not stopped working, and we won't stop working until we bring you the truth about it. That's right, baby. Yeah. So look out for future episodes. We got a lot of great stuff coming up, and we're very excited. Yeah, we've got, uh, let's see, we're going to do, we're going to take a deep, dive into the Iran Contra. The, that affair? Yes. Le affair Iran Contra. There's a lot of very interesting links from Iran Contra banks and dealers and different sort of alleged pedophile rings. Uh Franklin? Let me possibly, be Franklin. Possibly. <laughs> um it's it is, if I, if I might pause this for real quick, it is astounding how many of the same people that were involved in Iran-Contra are not only around today, but are involved in the Epstein shit. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, we're also going to hopefully talk to some people about the sex trade in the Balkans in the 90s. Uh-huh. Featuring so, our good friends, Dynecore. Epstein's yes. actual good friends. Um, we want to, like we mentioned before, we want to take a... A good look at Eyes Wide Shut. Whose director was killed by the cabal. Exactly. And we are going to do a Khashoggi blowout. And we're not just talking the Khashoggi that you all know That's and not love. a euphemism, by no, the way. We are going to blow sh- Khash- both Khashoggis out of both the water, <laughs> which is where one put Robert Maxwell. And we're going to meat grind the Khashoggis in the information meat grinder. There's going to be so much grinding. There's going to be so much bumping and grinding on the Khashoggi's. We have a lot of good stuff to bring you. The Epstein thing is the nexus of so many things, is a crime of intelligence, of pedophilia, that it is, <laughs> this spans. I want to say it's going to be fun, but I think it's just going to be weird. Yes. Uh, thanks for sticking with us. And uh, I'm Brace. That's Liz. Our producer is Young Chomsky. And we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.